everybody. We are delighted to uh, spend some time with you this morning. Grateful that you were willing to come out um, to this annual media event where we talk about the state of downtown, uh, what our downtown is doing. Um, we have two distinct reports today that we're going to be sharing with you. Um, the first is an annual survey that we do asking people their opinions about downtown Salt Lake City. This is a statewide survey, about 600 participants. Uh, we've done it with Lighthouse Research every year for the past seven years, so it's nice because we actually have um, a little bit of time and we can say year to year, how are we doing, how do things look, how are people feeling about their downtown. The other is this really beautiful um, survey, thanks in large part to our friends at CBRE for their help in designing it. This is the annual economic benchmark um, report that we produce every year. This really measures um, the state of downtown's economy in a variety of different elements. And so we'll go through both of these today. We've, there are a lot of themes that are consistent with both of these publications. And um, so that's really what we're talking about today, these two different reports that we're releasing at the same time. And I just want to make sure that you knew there were two distinct reports. Um, I wanted to welcome our guests. I think I have a slide that says that. Let's see. Amazing. Amazing! It's like magic. Um, my name's Jason Mathis. I'm the Executive Director of the Downtown Alliance. Delighted to have my friend and colleague Linda Wardell, General Manager of City Creek Center. Linda, thanks for being here. Um, Nadia Letty is the Vice President for CBRE, one of our great um, commercial real estate brokers. Thanks for being here and thanks again for partnering on this report with us. And then our new friend, Laura Fritz. Laura is the new Economic Development Director for Salt Lake City, so thanks for being here. And I, I'm happy to point out three female leaders in our community today. It shouldn't be unusual, but sometimes it is. And if this isn't a women's focused summit at all. It's, like, it's just happens that we have awesome women representing today, so thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to go through this report fairly quickly. We thought that the best thing to do would be to give you some background information and then um, give you a chance to do questions and answers afterwards with any of the participants. Um, they're going to provide some color commentary as we go through these reports. We just pulled out some highlights. Obviously, if we went page by page, um, question by question, we could be here for several hours, so we're not going to do that. We just pulled out the things that we thought might be the most relevant for you to know about today. Um, how to use this report. Uh, this really is the... Um, the economic benchmark for the city, we see it used often by brokers, we see it used by investors, people who are making decisions about coming to our city or bringing their businesses to our city or purchasing land or developing in the city. Um, Jesse Dean is the author of this report. He has three specific recommendations. You use this to close a deal, start a business, or be street smart. And so that's really the, the point of this particular report. Um, I mentioned some of the quick survey details about this one. 605 respondents for the survey report, um, plus or minus 4% margin of error. Uh, training is provided for all the questions where we've asked the same question year over year so you get a sense of how downtown is looking. Um, there are cross tabs with demographic information and open-ended responses were categorized by researchers. We just pulled together, I think, 11 slides from this report. The full report is available on our website, and I think there are 60 slides, so it's actually a much more comprehensive report. But again, we didn't want, we, we know this is an important media story, but didn't think it was worth four or five hours of your time today. So we are trying to uh, simplify a little bit. Some of the key findings for this report. Retail sales are incredibly strong in downtown Salt Lake City for uh, the second year in a row, record-setting retail sales. Last year was about $800 million, this year $850 million, so a huge spike in the number of people shopping downtown and spending money in downtown. The office market continues to grow. We're seeing great, great success with our office market. Um, very low um, um, vacancy rates in offices. Uh, and also, Utahns want to live downtown. Um, we see a ton of apartment houses being built. The market is really right to finance those at this time. Uh, but affordability and availability remain barriers. We really have an issue with affordable housing, not just in downtown, across the city, across the state. Um, but we know from our research, people want to live downtown. They just can't always afford to live downtown. Um, I wanted to take just a second to go through some of the strengths and weaknesses. So we did a SWOT analysis for you based on the research. This is on page four and five of the um, economic benchmark report. Um, in terms of strengths, the transit hub, the, the location of tracks, 
light rail, the location of the front rudder commuter rail, the proximity to the airport, all important for downtown and for our continued success. We have a really strong workforce downtown that continues to grow. Uh, Main Street is in the midst of a dynamic renaissance. It's, it's so exciting to walk down Main Street any day of the week and just see it vibrant and dynamic. And that wasn't the case eight years ago. It really has changed dramatically over the last several years. And we have a really engaged business community. This is a place where people cooperate, they work together, they want to be supportive. These are all unique strengths for downtown that many other cities don't benefit from. Um, in terms of weaknesses, we wanted to be clear, we do have weaknesses. Uh, homeless services, lots of conversations going on about what we're going to do with homeless services. And I want to be clear, we don't see the providers themselves as a weakness. We see the way that our community has organized homeless services as a weakness. The fact that we have isolated homeless service providers into one neighborhood, um, sent all homeless people to that neighborhood to receive services, that's a problem. And that you see the results of that um, in what we're doing in the Rio Grande neighborhood. Good news, Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County are actively working on solutions for this and we feel very confident about the future of our downtown and particularly the west side of downtown because of these, these strategies. I mentioned affordable housing, um, huge issue for us. We really need more affordable housing downtown, more workforce housing downtown. Um, so that's something that we're going to really focus on as an organization. Uh, urban versus suburban mentalities. So frequently we hear people um, who want to come downtown, but they think of, that they should have a suburban experience where they could pull up to the Bed Bath & Beyond parking lot and walk right in. And that isn't what happens in an urban environment. So helping people understand there are some distinctions between what you might do in a suburban location and an urban location, um, that's something that we see as something else we can focus on. And finally, liquor laws. Um, Utah's alcohol regulations should be reviewed to support a welcoming and hospitable climate for tourism and business recruitment efforts while continuing to ensure public safety and discourage underage drinking. We really want to focus on liquor laws over the next year. In terms of opportunities, we see the west side of downtown as a huge potential opportunity. Our plans to build a public market in the station center project are moving forward. Con uh, conversations about what we're going to do with homeless services continue to move forward, so we feel very optimistic about the west side of downtown. Um, I will mention um, reinvestment in the Gateway by Vestar Corporation is another huge important component that we see as an opportunity for West Side growth. A growing tech center. We have seen dozens of tech companies relocate their offices from the suburbs to downtown Salt Lake City over the past several years. We see that as a trend that continues to grow. Mostly it's driven by um, high powered tech employees who say we don't want to work in the suburbs, we want to work in an urban environment. We want the diversity and interest that comes from a urban environment and that's something that we encourage and support. Um, a convention hotel, we have high hopes that um, an announcement will be made soon uh, from Salt Lake County about a $350 million project um, in the downtown area. This has been a long time coming, something we've worked on for many years. We hope to have an announcement soon about the location of that, um, the brand of that, the financing of that. Um, so we're going to continue to push hard for that project. Um, and finally, economic development. We are so grateful to have Laura here. We see you as one of our opportunities. Um, an, an interest in Salt Lake City on the council level and from the mayor to um, invest in economic development, create a department that focuses exclusively on that. Four threats, regional competition. We do see a lot of interest from other communities who are interested in creating their own downtowns, their own urban centers. We don't discourage that, but we want to be thoughtful in helping to manage what we do in our own historic downtown uh, to make sure that we're taking advantage of our unique strengths. Um, air quality, a concern for economic development in our community, not just downtown, obviously, but the entire region. Regulations and fees, Salt Lake City will be addressing impact fees over the next month. I'm very concerned about this. We've had a lot of conversations with Salt Lake City over the past several years about this. Want to make sure that impact fees are done in ways that encourage development and are done uh, to help support new growth in a community, but really are focused on, on helping to encourage new growth and, and new development for downtown. And finally, Rio Grande Street. Um, it's, it's not too much to say that we have a crisis on 500 West. Um, that needs immediate action. The long-term strategies for homeless services are great, but there is a real crisis on 500 West, and we need to address that as part of downtown's continued strength. 
This is my favorite page of the report, Current and Future Development. Um, this looks at all of the different projects that are underway, soon to be developed. Obviously, 111, um, 3,500 3, new employees on the corner of First South and Main Street. Huge, huge for downtown Salt Lake City. Um, some renderings of other projects, the Regent Street Hotel, 151, the Boyer Company project. 360 is an apartment that's being built by um, uh, Gar Bryson Garbett near Pioneer Park. Regent Street, soon to open, going to be a beautiful addition. The Eccles Theater is going to be an amazing, amazing um, facility. I think anybody who had concerns about that as we were talking about it and getting ready to launch it, when you walk in the doors of that facility, you will be so proud that you live in this state. It really is a regional amenity. The airport rebuild is important for downtown, even though it's not downtown, it matters for downtown. Um, the new DA's office coming downtown, lots of new residential development downtown, new hotel projects downtown. So even as we sort of uh, applaud and, and clap ourselves on the back for the good projects that have already happened, we know that there's a lot in the pipeline. Um, the office market, I'm going I'm to actually turn this over to Nadia to talk a little bit about the office market and provide some color commentary on where we are right now and what that looks like, because you're the expert. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, the office market has been strong in the downtown area. We have about 11 million square feet of office, which represents about a third of the overall marketplace in the Salt Lake Valley. Um, you know, the big story, as you mentioned, Jason, is 111. What's interesting with that is the lease up of that property. Um, they're essentially, I think, going to be above 90% occupancy by the time that building is complete. There's a great mix of tenancy. You see financial services, some tech groups coming in, a lot of professional services. And I think, you know, Linda's group will definitely see the Goldman effect, as we called it, when they came into 222 Main. Essentially, it's going to be a doubling of that with a high density user, I think it's gonna be, you know, increase the vibrancy. Yeah. Yeah, lease rates are continuing to go up as well. 111 is also a great example. Um, you know, for a while, $31, $35 per foot was a high mark. But again, with their lease up, it shows the strength of what people are willing to do and the flight to quality. There's a chart in here that shows 111. We thought it would be an interesting pullout. Um, and this is a little bit, the information may be a little bit dated even now that it's coming out because I think you're right, when they open in just a few weeks, they're going to be about 90% occupancy, which yeah. is huge. Um, that gives you a sense of the kind of companies that are going into 111. Yeah, it's a great mix. And there is some groups coming in from the suburbs that are coming into the downtown market. So it's, it's good to see those groups coming in. And we saw that in 2015, as you mentioned, with some tech groups coming in. And then 2015, 222 also was 100% leased up as well. Yeah, so. That's huge. Um, employment, there's a, a whole category here on employment. Um, it's mostly, as, as Nadia mentioned, 81% office employment. Um, restaurants all are the next highest employer, 10% in restaurants um, downtown. And we'll, we'll hit on that key finding um, about the growth of restaurants and the importance of restaurants in our downtown community. One of the reasons we want to address liquor laws is because of the impact that liquor laws are having on restaurant and um, club development. Um, when you look at restaurant and retail sales, um, downtown represents about 6% of the overall county uh, sales, sales tax. There's a chart there that shows food and drink services are just exploding. $350 million last year in food and drink services, um, followed by clothing, uh, general merchandise, and other retail. Um, but we're really continuing to see a huge growth of restaurant and um, club uh, sales in the downtown area. Um, Linda, I'm going to give you an opportunity to chat about what you're seeing at City Creek Center with retail sales, because you're the expert. Okay, thank you. Well, you know, it's an interesting time in retail right now. I think that, um, you know, City Creek Center in many ways was built for the 21st century. And when we say that, what we mean is that shoppers are looking for much more um, than just, you know, sort of a box with some stores inside. They really are looking for a place where they can come and have an experience. 
And you know, what does that mean? What does it mean to come someplace and have an experience? Well, when you look at City Creek Center, it means all of those things um, that are something other than just the stores. When you look at the physical plant of City Creek Center, we talk about our architecture, we talk about our green spaces, our fountains, our roof, and yeah, okay, we get it. Some people come just to see the trout, and we're really okay with that. Um, but you know, it's all of those things that make us something more than you know just a mall. And, and most of you know that we really don't refer to City Creek Center as a mall because it is a gathering place. It's something more than just a place to shop and dine. We've always intended it to be an experience. And I think now that we've been around for about four and a half years, most people are starting to understand that you can come and have a meeting there. You can come and have a date night there. And we hope that you shop along the way, but we're okay if you just incorporate City Creek Center as a habit into your life. And you know, sometimes you come to shop and other times you come and have a great meal or, or have a great time when you're visiting with us because that's what the new retail spaces are all about. Um, it's an interesting time thinking about that, figuring out what these experiences are all about. And we're very fortunate that Snake Creek Center was built sort of on you know, the cusp of that trend and we were able to incorporate those experiences into our design. Um, while I don't speak for them, I think that you will also see that happening um, with our friends at Vestar who are redeveloping you know, the gateway. I think that they will also be looking at that. And so we'll be very fortunate in um, Salt Lake City um, to have two amazing destinations in our downtown um, that will be developed with you know, these thought processes in mind, with really engaging the consumer and you know, holding them in their environments for these kinds of experiences. And you know, speaking of experiences, retailers are thinking about this too. So while we're sort of looking at you know engaging the consumer and holding them in you know the center itself, consumers are being held in retail spaces in all sorts of amazing ways. So you know, Nordstrom is finding a way to hold consumers longer in their space, doing everything from you know girlfriend fitting rooms, you know, which is a fitting room so that you can pull back the curtain and say, hey, does my butt look too big in these jeans to your girlfriend who is, you know, in the adjacent fitting room to, you know, finding a way that you don't have to stand in line um, when you're making a purchase by doing, you know, everything wirelessly um, so that you never stand in line while you're in Nordstrom, which is one of my favorite things of all time. So, you know, there are all kinds of things going on. Um, look for technology soon. You know, if you thought Pokemon Go was cool, well, think about using that technology for shopping so you can envision yourself in an outfit that you choose. Um, you know, I think one of my favorite questions that I receive um, from people now is, well, you know, what do you think about, um, you know, shopping online? You know, do you really think that is a threat to you? And you know, I have to say that it, it really is a, it, it's an old fashioned way to think about the retail world. If you're thinking about it from the perspective that you're either shopping online or you're shopping brick and mortar, because that's just not the way that consumers think about our world anymore. You know, it used to be the shopping cycle looked like people, you know, got in their car, they went to a store, they made a purchase and they went home, right? That's what we all used to do. Well, some of us who are old enough, that's what we all used to do. But, you know, today consumers really have so many different choices that the shopping cycle looks really very different. So there's a, a research group, A.T. Kearney, who's looked at, at the cycle today. And um, what we know is that about 90% of purchases are still actually made in brick and mortar spaces. And I've got to tell you, I'm really excited to hear that in, in my profession. But we do know that about two thirds of people are actually pre-shopping online. And you know, so that's kind of a cool phenomenon. And, and I have to say that as much as I'm a City Creek Center, I fall into this bucket too. You know, I'm sort of online looking around, looking at all of my options, seeing what's out there. And then I go into the store and see what I've sort of pre-shopped online to know if it's what I want to buy. So the other thing that that tells us is that brick and mortar spaces, they actually have more value than just, you know, the store itself. They're creating value for brands, right? 
So people are there, they're immersing themselves in the brand while they're in the store. They're having sensory experiences and they're understanding more about the products by being in that space. So retailers are really starting to understand this and there are some retailers who previously didn't have brick and mortar stores, um, maybe they only had an online presence, and now they're starting to open brick and mortar stores just because they understand this new shopping cycle. We've actually had some of this happen at City Creek Center with actually quite a lot of success. So some of you may be familiar with Athleta. They were um, a retailer who just had an online presence. They were online and with catalogs and they opened um, a store at City Creek Center a couple of years ago. They've been very successful. Um, we have another one of those online retailers, Fatletics. Um, some of you may be familiar with them because of Kate Hudson's advertising associated with them. That usually triggers people to know athletics. Um, so they'll be opening um, in just about a week with us, um, and we're very excited to see um, what happens with them. But there are several other brands nationally, Warby Parker, Bonobos, um, and even Amazon is opening um, bookstores now um, to help um, increase their presence. And you know, you would think that Amazon is sort of omnipresent, right? I mean, everyone shops Amazon.com, I think. And you know, they're finding that they can increase their online business by having brick and mortar stores. So I guess my point with all of this is to say that, you know, shopping is not one thing or the other. It's an omni-channel experience now is the way that we think about it. And if you don't believe me, you only need to walk around City Creek Center for a few minutes and look inside a store and you will see someone shopping in a store and on the retailer's website at the same time. You know, we see it all the time. They're looking at their phone and saying, you know, I want this, find this for me in your store. And it's really you know, sort of an interesting phenomenon and a great time to be in retail. So this, uh, this note, the, the, this is a research, part of our research from um, opinion surveys really underscores that. The top reasons people say for coming downtown, dining, events and festivals, and shopping. That's the main reason that people around the state say that they come to downtown Salt Lake City. Um, and those are, those are often things that aren't available for them in their own communities. That's one of the reasons that they're interested in downtown. Um, we asked what to the following best describes why you typically attend entertainment events and the top reason, as, as was yet last year, uh, downtown events not available elsewhere, more other things to do while I'm downtown, so people are actually able to bundle things together. They go to a, new, a unique restaurant like Martine and then they go to the Twilight Concert Series or the ballet or they go to a jazz game. Um, but that idea of mixing trips and doing multiple things is, is kind of only available in some ways in the downtown area. Um, and that coming downtown makes the event feel more special. They feel like it's a real night out if they go into the urgent center. We asked people about why you want to live downtown. Would you consider living downtown? And not surprisingly, 77% said no. That's okay. If everyone, if we had two million people who all wanted to live downtown, that would actually cause a huge problem for <laughs> us. Um, but 20, 25% last year, 21% this year said, yeah, I would, I would actually consider living downtown. So the entire state's population, a quarter have some interest in living in the downtown area. Um, this breaks it out a little bit by age, and not surprisingly, people who are 18 to 24 are the most interested in living downtown. People who don't have kids yet, maybe, are not married, um, want to have that urban experience, and that's helpful for us to understand as we're thinking about how do we market downtown and how do we create affordability for downtown. Um, 18 to 24 percent uh, your 18 to 24 year olds are 44 percent of the people who want to live in the downtown area, or 44 percent of 18 to 24 year olds want to live in the downtown area. Uh, why would you consider living downtown? Convenience is the number one um, element. Entertainment spiked this year; it went from about five percent last year to 16 percent this year as a motivation for people wanting to live in the downtown. And work um, also high. Uh, two years ago it was at nine percent, last year 16 percent, and this year 16 percent again. Um, so there's a real interest in that proximity, in that convenience. People want to walk to work, walk to the store, walk to their home. Um, that's something that we're continuing to track. And, and elements like Green Bike, uh, which is a downtown alliance program, really help to facilitate that. And we're going to continue to look at other things we can do to help make downtown even more convenient. 
Um, we asked people what would be the, the, what would increase your interest in living downtown, and a lower cost was the number one thing cited by people about why they wanted to live downtown. 15% said that um, if, if it was more affordable, they would be more interested in living in the downtown area. Again, understoring our interest in affordable housing and making sure that we have enough availability in the downtown area. Um, there's a page in the, uh, in the research report that looks at rents. Um, and uh, rental affordability uh, of different cities um, in Salt Lake City, Salt Lake County, Utah statewide, and then we, we did some measurements. <coughs> Salt Lake City actually is a fairly affordable place to look to live when you compare it with other western cities. Um, the regional average is um, $1,800 for one bedroom. Ours is $1,000 for one bedroom. But we know that we can still do better. Even with the affordability that we have in Salt Lake City, we're interested in improving this dynamic. Um, when you talk about perceptions of downtown, this is one of the big questions that we ask every year. Uh, over the past 12 months, would you say your perception stayed the same, got worse, got better? Most people said it stayed the same, so that means if they had a high impression before, it stayed the same. If, if, if it was a low impression, that stayed the same. But 30% of Utah respondents said over the last year, my impression of downtown has improved. Um, that's down a little bit from last year, 1% from last year. Uh, in 2013, we saw a huge spike in the number of people who said that their impression of downtown improved, and we really attribute that to City Creek Center and the opening of City Creek Center in 2012. Um, we asked people one change or improvement that would uh, make you want to come downtown more often. Um, last year, that was improved parking. People said if you made the parking situation better, one out of four said that was what mattered to them. This year, that was down to 19%. Um, public transportation was up this year. Uh, more attractions, but nothing, can't think of anything, was 22%. People said there's nothing you could really do that would make me want to come downtown more. We also asked people um, to describe their perfect downtown. What would, what would you see in a perfect downtown? 6% uh, said improved dining, music events and activities, family or kid-friendly things to do were the two um, that followed. Um, and a lot of people said nothing as good as it is. We saw a huge, a huge bump in the number of people who said they really liked our downtown and they kind of feel proud of where we are right now. Uh, again, we asked motivations for visiting downtown. Art and entertainment, the number one interest that people have in coming to downtown. So that might be Mormon Tabernacle Choir, that might be symphony, that might be opera, that might be ballet. It could be a concert at Energy Solutions Arena or the Arts Festival. Um, but that was the number one thing that people said brought them to the downtown area. Um, followed by visiting downtown with family and friends. Uh, church religious events uh, down to 7% from 14% from 14 two years ago. 7% um, said they come downtown for work. And 7% said they are things that are only available in the downtown area. Um, so we thought this was a really interesting component. Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County are working now on a cultural core plan. And we think that this will be really an important element in helping to bump up the arts and entertainment component of the downtown core and the cultural core. Um, so again, the key findings, retail sales are strong, led by dining and nightlife, the office market continues to grow, and Utahns want to live downtown, but affordability and availability are barriers. I wanted to turn some time over to Laura to talk about the city's interest in downtown and strategies that you and your new department and Mayor Biskupski may be undertaking. Perfect. Thank you, Jason. Um, good morning. So on behalf of Mayor Biskupski, I'm very happy to say that the downtown economy is strong. Um, we are very proud of our downtown, and one of the priorities for the mayor is this commitment to making sure the economy throughout the city is strong. And with that, she's created a new Department of Economic Development. Within that Department of Economic Development are three priority areas, the Redevelopment Agency, the Arts Council, and Business Development. We're going to be working diligently to not only recruit great new businesses to our city, but we're also going to be working to retain those businesses that we saw on this great slide today. Um, with that, I think it's really important to know that we are committed to vibrant opportunities for new growth. I think that some examples of this include the 111 Main Street project and the New Eccles Theater, which will open on October 21st of this year. Um, and speaking of partnering, the mayor and I are committed to our relationship with the Downtown Alliance. We feel that it's very important to continue to make sure that the heart of our city um, is strong, beautiful, and prosperous. And we know that the Downtown Alliance is an organization to help make that happen with us. I thank them for the work they do um, and for this 
phenomenal report that presents incredible data that, as a new department, we're going to be using to help us put together our strategies for a work plan for the upcoming year. Um, and thank you to the businesses who continue to invest in our downtown, to do business in our downtown, to the residents who live there and make it a vibrant place. Um, and again, thank you to the Downtown Alliance for putting this report together. Terrific. So that, that concludes the formal portion of our meeting. We're available to chat one-on-one -on -one about any of the resort report findings, um, what we highlighted today, or if there are other elements we want to talk about downtown, we're happy to do that as well. Thanks very much for coming out today.